What's up guys, welcome back. Today we've got a couple things to do on the roaster. Um, you saw in part one, I got these holes cut out for the USB port and the IEC connector. Um, I went ahead and got the hardware to mount those guys. Um, so we'll get those fitted up and see how they work. Um, one other thing I wanted to do um, was get all these components mounted. You can see they're kind of just loosely uh, sitting in here. So we'll get those fixed down. And what I did was I got a piece of uh, GPO3. Uh, it's a electrically insulative uh, fiberglass board. So we'll get that cut to size and we'll get this uh, in here and get all these components mounted. And then one other thing I wanted to do was mount up these uh, infrared heaters. Um, those are the elements that actually provide the heat for the roaster. And I got this little uh, splitter so I can get all the wiring kind of neatly done up in there. So uh, that's it for that. Um, and then one more thing we're going to try to get done in today's video is mount this cover. Um, I made this a while back and this just covers up the motor and the chain drive. So we'll have to make some little tabs that come off of the frame and get that mounted on there. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so I got the uh, fiberglass board cut to size um, and I kind of have it mocked up in the base plate with these little rubber feet um, just kind of temporarily. Um, so now I can come back and lay out all the components where they need to go and I'll pilot drill the holes and if I need to I might uh, drill and tap them later. Um, we'll see if I have to do that or if I could just use like a wood screw or something like that. And then I also got these connectors um, bolted in and they fit pretty nice. So uh, yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Alright, so I've got all the components mounted. Um, I went ahead and drilled and tapped this and just used machine screws for everything. Um, it actually worked out pretty well. This stuff uh, taps okay. It just makes a huge mess. Um, so I did most of that off camera outside. Um, you, you saw me when I used the bandsaw to cut this stuff inside and it just made a huge mess. So I just took it outside and finished it up there. Um, so that's all set up. You can see 
Um, the fidget has a couple little standoffs under it, as well as the motor controllers. And also in between, I just go, went ahead and stacked them because uh, it saved a lot of space there. Um, since the, you know, the, the area is not that big on this thing. So went ahead and just did that. Um, and then the relays got mounted up pretty nice on these heat sinks. I'll have to go back and put uh, a thermal compound in between the heat sinks and the um, relays. And then the power supply just has two little M4 screws, or sorry, number four, not M4, uh, holding it on. So that's all done. So what I'd like to do next is uh, move on to this rear cover and make some little tabs to uh, mount that guy on there. So I've got these tabs welded on. Um, I don't know if you can get in there and see. My welds got a little better. I was kind of out of practice and I also got this uh, 045 rod um, that I had been needing. Um, but anyway, yeah, so those guys are all welded on there. This one I had to do left-handed, so it was kind of kind of a weird positioning, but it came out okay. You know, not super pretty. Um, but anyway, so I got the pilot holes drilled in this. So what I need to do now is uh, set the cover on there and then just transfer the holes over. Hopefully I get them to kind of line up in the middle. I kind of had marked it out. You can't really see now because of the heat. Um, but yeah, and then I'll uh, drill and tap those and we'll get the cover mounted and that should be it.
All right, so we got the cover all mounted up. Um, I went ahead and went around and just uh, drilled and tapped the holes, um, transferred them over from the cover onto the tabs. And I did them one by one so that um, I knew I'd have a perfect fit and there wouldn't be any misalignment. Um, so that turned out pretty good. And then I also had some shims on here to give it some space between the main body of the roaster, um, just so it's not rubbing on it and rubbing the paint off. Um, Cause you know, things will expand and contract with the heat cycles. So, you know, just left a little room for safety there. So uh, last thing we got to do is mock up these uh, heaters um, and get this little splitter mounted somewhere. So let's move on to that. All right, so I got the splitter mounted just below the heating elements. It kind of just sits on top of um, that bracket. Um, you can see we got to wire it still, but we'll save that for another video. That's gonna do it for today's video. Uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. We'll see you in the next one.